Thank you. And first of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the organizers for inviting me <laughs> and all the others and for making uh, this event possible. And uh, I must say, honestly, that this surprised me a lot because uh, usually, uh, for several reasons, in the first place, uh, 65 is not a uh, really important age in Russia because in Russia uh, there is no mandatory retirement. <laughs> but more important is that usually such events are organized by uh, the institution where uh, this uh, person in question works, uh, by his uh, PhD students, his collaborators, uh, and in this case everything is different. I uh, do not work in this High School of Economics, and if I have some contacts, then with a different department, there is also several departments of economics here. And uh, uh, the organizers were, were not my PhD students. And I have no, uh, I'm a really exceptional mathematician because I don't have any collaborators. I haven't written a joint paper in my life. Although I'm trying, uh, for several years I'm trying to do this and I hope that I'll eventually succeed. I have several projects uh, in this direction. But uh, and, uh, to compensate for this, uh, while choosing uh, uh, the uh, topic uh, to talk, uh, I uh, made a choice basing on the uh, criterion uh, that uh, this topic should uh, that contribution to this topic be made by as many uh, participants as, follow, uh, as possible. And so, uh, uh, to this topic, five of the mathematicians present here contributed, and two more who were not able to come also contributed. So, I think that this uh, was the only possible choice. And also, uh, this is very elementary, and so uh, those of you who haven't studied uh, much of the Greek geometry or who have forgotten all they studied previously, uh, they will be able to follow, hopefully. So, uh, there are several parts. The first part uh, is known to everybody, but I recall it. Uh, it concerns convex bodies. So, we are in, <coughs> for a change, we are in a real, a real, a real Euclidean space, uh, and uh, we have the origin. And we have some convex body here uh, containing the origin. And we can see the hyperplanes. Uh, and a hyperplane corresponding, uh, the hyperplane corresponding to alpha is called uh, separating if the following inequality is satisfied for all x in this convex body x. That means simply that uh, this convex body lies in the uh, half space uh, defined uh, by this uh, hyperplane. And it's called, so alpha is called separating. And it's called uh, supporting. If it is separating and there is 
at least one x for which we have an equality. So this means that it's like this. This is supporting. And of course, uh, these notions are very important because uh, as all the really important things, they uh, exist not only in mathematics, but uh, in, other, uh, in other fields of activity. For example, if uh, X is a set, a production set, uh, some collections of products that you can produce, and alpha, the vector alpha is a vector of prices, then uh, this kind of product is your income and you are looking for uh, uh, the most profitable uh, production uh, set. So, as I, you understand, uh, uh, these things are considered much more important than uh, uh, everything that I'll t uh, talk about later. So, and this, uh, so this objects were intensively uh, studied, and uh, uh, they were used to define dual objects. Uh, which are also important in economics, they are called shadow prices. So the dual object for this X, we have a convex body, the dual object or polar object X star is defined as uh, the set of uh, separating alpha for X. Uh, and it's easy to see that uh, the boundary of this dual uh, body is formed by the uh, supporting subject. So we have uh, two bodies and two boundaries. Uh, now, uh, to give some example, uh, let's consider uh, these are the axes, consider the square like this. Uh, what will be the door object? Uh, the door object will be, I uh, draw it here, it will be something like this. So, uh, now another example. If you have a sphere uh, of radius rho, the door will be a sphere of radius like this. More generally, if you have a polyhedron, then you can consider the dual polyhedron, and this was studied uh, classically, and you know that all the regular poly poly polyhedra are split into uh, pairs. So everybody knows uh, this. But of course, when we speak about uh, uh, so uh, something else, it's easy to see that if <coughs> y is a convex body contained in X, then uh, the dual body uh, contains the dual body for X. So the relations are reversed that one expects. Uh, but maybe the most important property for us is that uh, ref the reflectivity uh, property. So uh, we should define uh, the dual object. And double do is equal to x. And to show this, uh, we consider the incidence uh, correspondence. We consider the pairs, the couple of a point and a hyperplane, uh, such uh, line in the product, such that, uh, of course, uh, Alpha supports uh, X and X, and then X is called contact point. Contact point of alpha. <coughs> so we can say the such pair that X is a contact point of alpha. And we have, uh, of course, two projections. Uh, because contact points are clearly contained uh, in the uh, front and the boundary. And we have two projections, P and Q. 
And then it's rather easy to show then we have this equality. And from this uh, reflexivity, uh, reflexivity follows. Uh, so, uh, mm, if you look at such picture or such picture, you see that not all uh, not points are really equal. There are different uh, types of points. For example, in this square, there are points uh, lying uh, on the sides, and there. Are Vertices. And the difference is that uh, for a point on a side, there is only one supporting uh, faculty, in this case, line. And for uh, vertices, there are many, infinitely many. And so, uh, in some sense, uh, in some sense, uh, this uh, justifies to uh, justifies the study of such uh, singularities. And we give a definition. The point X of the boundary is called R singular if uh, we have such an inequality. Uh, yes. Uh, for example, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, this means that uh, the corresponding uh, the, uh, the set of corresponding uh, uh, supporting hyperplanes is very large. So we have a filtration. Yes, and we we, we denote the set of uh, singular points by uh, like this. And so we have a filtration. And by definition, of course, this is already equal. Uh, this is all, all, already uh, empty. There are no such things. Uh, and uh, in this way, uh, we uh, uh, can study the singular point uh, of X. And this makes sense. For example, if X is a polyhedron, uh, then uh, we know that uh, this polyhedron, convex polyhedron, is the convex hull, is the convex hull of its vertices. And vertices are uh, n minus one singular points. So uh, this way, uh, and somehow singularities uh, uh, catch the most important properties of uh, this dual uh, polyhedron uh, and the polyhedron itself. Uh, and uh, there is a fact which is almost well, which is an easy exercise, but I'll call it. Uh, Falling uh, well, uh, I'll call it falling uh, again from Roland above uh, theorem of Anderson Flee. Well, this is a paper dating back some 60 years, but uh, they considered a much more general situation when this is not a trivial because they considered not proper set but. Uh, uh, very general situation and considered a uh, uh, closed-off measure. So the theorem says uh, that for any R, the dimension of this uh, yes, uh, so uh, yes, we have this inequality. And uh, this follows from the following. Uh, from the following, the, if we take uh, the tangent space to this set in a general point, then it's orthogonal to the fiber. So we consider uh, the set of all uh, uh, supporting hyperplanes. We consider this orthogonal complement in uh, the initial space. This lies in the dual space. 
and then uh, this is contained in here. And so this yields this uh, uh, inequality where x is general, a general point here. Uh, you can uh, easily prove this as an exercise. Uh, it's really very easy. Just uh, and this example illustrates the proof in the general situation. So these are some obvious facts about uh, facts from con uh, convex geometry. Now we will do this complex geometry. And uh, since you do not need to change too many letters to pass from convex to co or complex, we'll see that uh, this convex setting gives us uh, a hint what to do in the case of complex varieties. And uh, to be more clear, I will consider only, so we consider complex projective varieties, uh, and moreover, not singular. So this is projective space. We assume that they are non-degenerate of dimension small n in P capital N uh, and smooth. Uh, the difference is that uh, for complex bodies, at uh, a general point, we have only one supporting hyperplane. Here, if the dimension is larger than one, we have a lot. So we need uh, to introduce uh, 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 the uh, so-called conormal variety, which plays the role of incidence correspondence. So we consider uh, this variety in, a pro in the product of x and the dual uh, projective space. And this is the set of all pairs consisting of a point of variety and a, a hyperplane. With the uh, uh, side z, the hyperplane, uh, corresponding to alpha is tangent to our variety at this point. Tangent, uh, this is a tangent space, it's of course n-dimensional, and the hyperplane uh, uh, containing this tangent space is called uh, tangential hyperplane. So this is a uh, set of all such couples. It has obviously dimension n minus 1. Uh, the general fiber of uh, the fiber of uh, the point N is a linear space of this dimension. And again, we have two projections to X and to the dual, uh, and, and to P, PN dual. Uh, and the image is denoted. By x star, and it's called the dual variety. So uh, we generalized uh, the notion of uh, dual uh, convex body to the case of protective variety. Uh, now, of course, uh, if we take a point in the dual variety, then it's natural that before we consider this. And this is the set of points at which uh, the hyperplane is tangent to our variety x. Uh, and uh, this is as called the, the contact locus of the hyperplane alpha. Uh, and uh, usually uh, it isn't large, but sometimes it's quite large. For example, uh, consider a cone. Then, uh, if you take uh, this point, then uh, the tangent, uh, uh, the tangent, each tangent is tangent along at least this uh, line, and so uh, uh, this contact locus is positive dimension. And uh, a general fact is as follows: denote. Uh, the co-dimension by C. Uh, so, um, take a point alpha in the dual variety, then uh, the contact locus uh, 
contact locus. Uh, is like this. If and only if alpha is non singular. Where sista is also the codimension. For most loose varieties, sista is equal uh, to one. So then the dual variety is a hypersurface, and then it's just a point, one point. So in this case, the, a general hyperplane is tended to only at a single point. It has simple uh, tendency. Uh, but sometimes, uh, X star can be positive dimensional, even in the case of varieties, uh, smooth varieties. For example, consider uh, the Segre product uh, in P5, then the dual variety is isomorphic, naturally isomorphic to X itself. And so, in this case, the star is equal to 2, and uh, all the hyperplanes in this case, uh, all the uh, hyperplanes are tangent along the line. So, this happens. And another uh, result is that uh, if you take any point in the dual variety, then the dimension of the contact locus does not exceed C minus 1. This is called theorem of tangents. So, um, and I would like to mention that uh, similar um, things were, uh, well, maybe one more definition. Um, Yes. So, definition. Uh, consider a point alpha in the blue variety, that means the tangent hyperplane. Uh, then alpha is called uh, weakly a singular. Uh, if the following is satisfied, consider the linear span of the contact locus. It should be uh, shouldn't should be a, should have at least dimension r. Uh, this uh, definition was uh, given by Roland Abouf without uh, the word weakly. Uh, and uh, so we get uh, clearly we get again a filtration. Filtration uh, so filtration of the dual variety. So uh, the largest possible is C minus uh, 1. And uh, 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 Roland Abouf uh, uh, conjectured, sorry, that I should put W here for weekly. Conjecture uh, 
So you see uh, that this is the same uh, complete analog of uh, the theorem of uh, uh, the theorem I mentioned, the theorem uh, by Anderson and Klee. Uh, and uh, the difference is in uh, taking the linear span. In taking the linear span, uh, because uh, for convex bodies, uh, our faces were contained, uh, they spanned a linear space and uh, there was no equation. And here uh, we can have, for example, a curve uh, and uh, it's natural to consider the linear span. And uh, Ralan above made this conjecture in connection uh, uh, with uh, the work of uh, Ramstad and Sturmers, uh, who mm, Consider similar, uh, somewhat similar varieties, which uh, they denoted like this. This is again dual variety, and uh, uh, this is a sub variety uh, defined as the closure of the set of hyperplanes, which are uh, tangent to x at r plus one uh, points in general position. General position means that the spray is, uh, span APR. Uh, in a space of maximal damage. So uh, this is uh, such varieties from uh, another natural filtration uh, of the dual variety closely related to this one. And in particular, if R is small, so that if we consider the R second variety of X, this is the locus of uh, linear spaces spanned by R plus one points of X in general, uh, in general position, uh, then uh, we ha simply have, this is well known, uh, this equality. This variety are uh, just the dual of the, of the second variety. But for large R, R, this variety coincides with the ambient space, and these are different. Anyhow, we have some other filtration in the dual variety, and Roland above uh, noticed that Van uh, uh, and Stufitz uh, implicitly used this conjecture in their work. So he extracted this conduct and uh, made it explicit. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, this seems, uh, seemed to be a very natural conduct until uh, it was disproved by an example given by Claire Walbert. So I did this, explain this example, which will show. Where is the problem? The example, uh, as many examples in projective geometry, uh, geometry uh, comes from Veronese varieties. So we take the Veronese embedding of P uh, n. This will be our x. And uh, uh, this variety uh, is contained in the linear space P nu, where nu is this binomial coefficient, uh, and uh, we will consider points in the dual variety, in the dual uh, linear space. Now, what does it mean? Uh, uh, what uh, if we take a point in uh, in the dual space and consider uh, the corresponding hyperplane? This hyperplane uh, corresponds naturally to a form of degree d in n plus one variable. And what does it mean uh, that the hyperplane is tangent to our uh, variety, to our Veronese variety? It means that uh, the intersection is singular, so that we get a singular hypercircle. And now uh, consider examples, most natural examples of singular hypersurfaces. They are cones. Uh, cones over a hypersurface. <coughs> Uh, 
of degree D in P and minus one. So hold this vertex at a point. Uh, the first question is uh, so the corresponding uh, uh, uh form a sub variety of the dual variety. Uh, we'd like to uh, compute the dimension. And the dimension is quite clear because uh, we take a hypersurface in the space dimension one less and they form a, a variety of uh, this dimension. And we have uh, 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 and we have uh, also some uh, liberty to take the vertex. And altogether we get a variety of this dimension in the dual space. So this is a variety of hyperplanes uh, corresponding uh, to uh, conic hypersurfaces. Uh, and this is our, uh, will be our x uh, star weekly uh, for some uh, index. Uh, now, what, are, what is the tendency locus? And the tendency locus should be uh, computed honestly as a scheme. And the scheme is defined by vanishing of the partial derivatives. So here we have a hypersurface. defined by an equation of degree d and the number of variables is one less because we are in pn minus one we should consider the equation like this and there are n such equations but uh, these equations have degree d minus one and to replace them uh, by equations of degree d, so that we'll get something linear in uh, this space, we need to replace such, equa uh, such an equation by a system of equations like this. Uh, these are equivalent. And now we, uh, we get an an obvious inequality so in this way we get n times n plus one equations of degree d so there is a linear relation between yes minus one yeah right uh, and so Mm, we get uh, and this is larger than uh, mm, uh, where F where R Is of course uh, the codimension. So for D, for example, larger than 4, this inequality which was conducted by all uh, above uh, is false. And uh, the reason for this is, of course, that. Uh, this scheme of singularities uh, for this type of thing is just the vertex of this code, but with very high multiplicity. And so its linear span, surprisingly, is very large. Although this is only one point, but this is what one uh, calls thick point. And this uh, makes this fail, and this doesn't occur for complex points. Now I come to the third part of my talk. And this is a different story. Uh, it concerns oscillating spaces. So, 
You can just uh, forget what I told about before and uh, we'll uh, remember all this uh, later. So definitions. Again, uh, in the formal notation we take a hyperplane. And uh, it's called osculating. Uh, if uh, the corresponding uh, uh, hyperplane uh, oscillating at a point X. Uh, uh, if we consider its image in the uh, local ring of the point X, then uh, I'll take the freedom to write it like that. H uh, is contained in the cube of this maximal idea. For tangency you need uh, uh, that h is contained in the square, and for osculation unit that is contained in the cube. Uh, analytically, that means that if we expand the local equation, then uh, the, uh, the standard series will start with uh, cubic terms. Uh, and now uh, the osculating space. To x at this point x is just the intersection of all oscillating hyperplanes at x. Uh, now maybe I should explain uh, that uh, the origin of this uh, terminology. Uh, tangency, and the, but uh, tangent comes from uh, the Latin word uh, tangere, uh, which means uh, to touch. And uh, osculation uh, comes from the Latin verb osculare, which means to kiss. And of course, uh, from this terminology, you usually see that kissing uh, assumes uh, more intimacy than just passing, and uh, therefore, osculating uh, hyperplanes approximate the variety much better than phantom uh, phrases. So, uh, uh, it's mostly to study that. In Is my some terminology for fourth power? Hmm? Is there some terminology? I will not use the first part. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to. Uh, to speak about Kama Sutra. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, but the difference between tangent spaces and oscillating spaces uh, is considerable. As you know, uh, and, uh, I recall that we consider those varieties, all tangent spaces have the same dimension, equal to the dimension of the variety. But uh, for the dimension of the oscillating space, we only have inequalities. The law of bound is, of course, the dimension of the tangent space, because clearly the creating space contains tangent space. Uh, and the upper bound uh, is like this, where n is the dimension of the ambient space, and this is just the number of the maximum number of quadratic uh, terms. Now, the story goes as follows. I should, uh, yes, uh, so uh, of course uh, maybe I should give some examples. Uh, take plain curves. If uh, the degree of x of smooth surface is uh, larger than 2, uh, then uh, there are uh, always point where, points where uh, tangent space uh, is equal uh, to the oscillation space, and these are inflection points. But for most points, uh, the oscillation space is uh, uh, just the plane. The ambient plane. Uh, and uh, usually, if uh, the dimension is large enough, you expect that at a general point, uh, the oscillation space uh, has maximal uh, possible dimension. But this is not always so, uh, and maybe I should mention a nice example, classical example, of Tagliati surface. Uh, 
He was all that there is. No, we are just missing the Zatulin. Tanyati. Do you know? If I'm not mistaken, Tanyati is the brother of the Tanyati. You know, after whom the town is named in Russia. Well, so we consider, as usual, Veronese surface. Defined by cubics, and we uh, mm, yes, and then we uh, pro uh, take three inner projections, as we will explain. Uh, uh, Sir John Clark explained us uh, it's an important thing to do, uh, and so we project from three distinct points, and we get a variety x tilde in P6 of degree six. A surface of degree six in P six, uh, and uh, this is a Lebesgue surface. Uh, if you listen to the previous talk, you will recognize it. But uh, now consider uh, the <coughs> populating spaces to this surface uh, at the uh, arbitrary point. They are five dimensional, as one would expect by this formula n is equal to two. Uh, so I should write like this because two is not like the dimension here. Uh, but what is uh, and this is usual. But what is unusual is that uh, and this is a nice exercise to do this with our computations to show that there exists a point y in P six such that this point is contained in all these oscillating spaces. Uh, and so, if we project from this point, we get a surface, perfectly non-singular surface in P5, uh, the Kretzer surface, but uh, embedded in P5, and all its oscillating spaces will have dimension 4. So, one can uh, speak uh, much about this and similar examples, but uh, this is just to show that uh, some unusual uh, phenomena occur. So, but I proceed now with my story. In uh, 20 years ago, Landsberg showed showed that uh, if C, which is I recall it the codimension. Uh, satisfies this inequality, and x is a general point, then the oscillating space uh, coincides with the ambient space. So there are no type oscillating hyperplates at the general point. Uh, now, uh, three years ago, mostly, Uh, gave an elementary proof of the same result, but with uh, weaker, weaker assumption, like this. Then I, uh, he sent this text to me, I thought a little bit, and then I showed how uh, to extend this proof for uh, this. Uh, under this condition. And uh, one can do better because if x is uh, has a codimension larger than that, for example, like this, then it's easy to construct uh, a lot of examples when there is an oscillating hyperplane on each, at each point. Uh, it, it can be constructed for any n, but I just for lack of time, I just give one example. Consider uh, the product of three lines in P7. And then uh, through each point, uh, there passes a hyperplane. So the corresponding section is a union of three quadrics. Just take uh, two factors and uh, take a union. And then uh, clearly, uh, this hyperplane oscillates. And it's the only oscillating space because uh, there are three of such coins coming together. So uh, one cannot do better. 
And uh, but then uh, we found that uh, two other people who wanted to come, but were unable because of uh, because uh, without regard to this conference, uh, Chino Chiliberto organized a meeting <coughs> of the Italian Union, a mathematical union, just this week. Uh, the Ernesto and Russo. Uh, they actually not uh, only proved a similar result, but they found that actually this result was uh, proved by um, by Terracini. Terracini, who actually proved that uh, the dimension of the second fundamental form at a general point is c minus one, which is basically the same. The second fundamental form. Here, uh, I assume that people had differentially geometry course, but if not, you can just. What's the dimension of the form? Uh, second fundamental form is not just a form. It's a linear system of forms. It's dimension. It's dimension of the straight in space minus the dimension. Well, but this is not important. I will not use it, so I will comment on this. Uh, because I have uh, limited time. And so, uh, it, uh, this seemed to settle uh, uh, the problem, but uh, actually not, because uh, here we speak about a uh, general point, and uh, the result is uh, pretty coarse. One would like to uh, bound the dimension of the uh, oscillating space, and to see uh, what kind of uh, certification it gives in uh, the dual model. So, I introduce <coughs> the necessary definitions. Uh, we had, I recall that we had conormal variety, but now I speak about uh, second conormal variety, which is contained in the first one. And it's uh, naturally defined as uh, the set of pairs x alpha such that, as you can imagine, uh, this hyperplane osculates at x. Uh, the problem is that this variety, uh, we cannot say much about uh, its uh, dimension or even irreducibility. It may have several components, but never mind. Uh, now, consider, it's natural <laughs> to consider the osculation locus. This is a sub variety of x. Uh, and uh, it's uh, just so we call we, and we denote by P2 and Q2 the projection onto both factors, uh, both factors uh, to X star, but not onto X star. Uh, so the variety uh, of osculating points is just uh, P2 of this second canonical variety. And more generally, we consider the case osculating locus in X defined by, by the following. It's the points of X where the dimension is large enough, like this, or which is the same, uh, sometimes more convenient, uh, where mm, the dimension of the escalated space satisfies this inequality. And I should say that uh, this dimension is not constant, as I mentioned, but it, of course, more semi-continuous, that's obvious. Uh, so, uh, and this OK is uh, called the case oscillating locus. And we have a filtration and finally OC, this is the largest possible measure. 
because uh, the fiber of P1 had dimension C uh, minus 1. Uh, and next we consider also a uh, corresponding filtration of the dual variety. So we define this variety of uh, the dual variety, which is called the locus of uh, emasculating hyperplanes, as follows in a similar way. It's alpha hyperplanes. This is a symmetric definition. And we symmetrically have the filtration priori the last one is uh, this one because uh, no hyperplane can oscillate along, along all the variety, the entire variety. Uh, okay, so, and then with this notation we have the following theory. We have the following planes. First, here car satisfies the following. Here M satisfies the following. And finally, uh, the, uh, we have the following bound for the uh, dimension of the second canonical variety. And uh, it's easy to see that all uh, the claims, the three claims, are equivalent to each other. And uh, uh, the second claim, I prove the second claim using some arguments similar to the proof of the theorem of tangencies. So first, uh, I, before proceeding further, I list several uh, corollaries. Uh, I started five minutes later. Yeah. You remember? <laughs> so, let's do this some corollaries. <coughs> First corollary, uh, let X be a general point. Then, uh, in particular, uh, this implies the result I mentioned that if the codimension is at most n, then uh, there are no oscillating hypothetical material for it. Second corollary. Hmm? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, it can be larger yeah. than that. Uh, I don't understand the law. No, no, it's greater ripple. Greater ripple? I can give an example. It means that the same fundamental form is large enough. Oh. Uh, so, the locus of points. Oh, okay. Such that the second oscillating space is equal to the first one uh, is at most uh, finite. So these are the points where kissing is equal to touching. <laughs> These are rare. For example, for a general hypersurface, uh, for a general space curve, uh, general uh, plane curve, there are always such points 
where they are equal for uh, a general type of surface, they are none, but they are special type of surface for which they agree. And third, mm, suppose that uh, n is small like this, uh, then the co-dimension co in x of this satisfies this equal. Well, I wanted to give some examples, but uh, probably I have no time for that, and I come to the last part of my talk, fourth, which should bring together everything. So I prove the same, but then uh, we were corresponding with Christian Piskin, and he suggested that uh, this theorem can be uh, also obtained by uh, uh, modifying uh, uh, the conjecture of Roland Bohr. So definition: uh, a point alpha is called a singular without weakly. If this is larger than or equal to R. Uh, what is this? This is the union of all tangent spaces to this scheme that we introduced before. The difference with the definition of weak uh, a singularity is that we take tangent spaces. One could think that uh, by taking the union, the union of tangent spaces, we enlarge our variety. But actually, we cut the extra nilpotents. We cut up to the second order, and we don't consider high order nilpotents. And so, uh, here we denote the block of, of our singular points like this, as in the convex set case. And so, in this case, we have the following theorem. Uh, and more precisely, let Take a general point in this sub variety, then the tangent space to this stratum at this point is orthogonal to the linear span of this. Now uh, this is a, uh, an easy theorem, uh, as Christian calls this, interim prophecy. But what is important uh, for today's talk is that it immediately implies this result on uh, the osculating uh, spaces. <coughs> because uh, um, uh, this is just a few words. Uh, take this point uh, alpha. Uh, and uh, uh, we have then the variety y. And uh, it says it, it's immediately followed from the definition of scalating spaces that you have this uh, inclusion where this is a union of te uh, tangent space uh, to x at the points of y. It, to understand this, you should uh, take a developable of a curve and consider the tangent space to this developable. Then you get the scalating space. And this is uh, the same uh, situation. And so from the theorem of tendencies it follows that and 
uh, we're done because uh, immediately we get the following. Uh, and actually, one can show that uh, if we have inequality there, then we have oscillation uh, and necessarily along linear spaces. And finally, uh, again, I skipped some examples, uh, but I give the uh, easiest one. Uh, take a space curve. Example of application of this. Uh, take a space curve, and uh, we can consider its dual variety, its uh, surface. And we uh, suppose that we are interested in planes that are tangent to C at uh, three or more points. So, then an immediate consequence uh, of this theorem is uh, that these points are aligned, contained in the same line. And in this case, there are two situations, other two possibilities. Either you can uh, you have a cone, and then you cut it by some surface, and uh, this is our curve. Or, or and in this case, it can be non-singular, non or you have a developable, and uh, you can again uh, cut it by a certain surface, but in this case, the curve is singular. And uh, by using the similar techniques, you can classify a lot of uh, high-dimensional situations where Tendencies are not general. Okay, so my time is over. Thank you. Are there some questions? Yes. You stated that there are always finitely many points at which the tangent and the oscillating spaces are the yes. same. Can you count them? Can I find them? Count them. No, because of, take a hyper surface. There are many possibilities. Uh, most you can call for or count the maximum number, you can use zero. So, but I don't know how to do this. It's uh, not so easy uh, and a problem. Right? Even though for the plane curves, I think that something is known. You know, uh, you know uh, in general, you know, it is the number of protection points, uh, but even the situation is not known. This is just the, uh, uh, what I wanted to underline is that uh, here you don't make any computations and you get simply some uh, reasonable results. But with counting, you can get a question. More questions? Thank you.